It's not going to sink it all season, especially when the head coach Josh McDaniel comes out yesterday and says he's entitled to his opinion because he's earned it. Okay. Uh, well, then we find out that Jimmy Garoppolo had surgery on his foot in March. Now, you'll remember when Garoppolo got hurt for the 49ers last year, it was like December with the game against the Dolphins. And at first they came out and said, it's like a limp break and he needs surgery and he's done for the year. Okay. Then a couple days later, the 49ers trainer comes out and says, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, we think that he doesn't need surgery now. And it's possible he could be back for the playoffs before to Adam Schefter. And everyone got excited. And so as it turns out, season ends, as we know, they lose the year from the Philadelphia Eagles. They have no quarterback left. Garoppolo's in street clothes on the sideline as Purdy goes down, and Josh Johnson goes down, and it was a nightmare. And now he goes to the Raiders. And if you remember, there was a hiccup. There was one day where Garoppolo goes to the facility and leaves and never signed the contract. Then goes back the next day, and they get it ironed out. Turns out that's what they were discussing, this foot injury that at first did not need to, that first needed surgery, that did need surgery, and now needs surgery. They're saying he's going to be ready for training camp, but, I mean, he got an over-30 quarterback who's now having foot surgery. He's got plenty of injury history to begin with. This is the last thing that the Raiders want. Yeah, I mean, that being said, they should have known, right, because it's Jimmy Garoppolo. I can understand the differing diagnosis of because we had my buddy, Dr. Rock Pazitano, on last night. He always tells me teams do too much surgery on the feet. He said, once you operate on the foot, you have the chance of you're probably not going to have a productive career after that. And he gets to list a thousand examples. So I can see avoiding that. But it doesn't matter because Jimmy G always gets hurt, so the Raiders have to know this. That's why I think a lot of people are wondering, was it worth getting rid of Derek Carr to bring in Jimmy G? And I have to admit, first, I think Jimmy G may be a slight more of a winner. Now I wonder, you know, if it just hit me like a ton of bricks. Yeah. There's no way Jimmy G's staying healthy. And like, should it just be like Right? Probably. Although I can see the argument for going in a completely different direction. Maybe this is part of a two-year plan where they're tanking and going for Cowboys. But honestly, I think you could have probably done that. <laughs> like, maybe not the tanking with Carr, because Carr is pretty durable. Yeah, he's probably too good for that. But like, listen, and you know, now it is time to re-examine this. Like, was Garoppolo so much of an upgrade over Carr that it was worth upending this whole thing? Like, did Garoppolo turn it into a, to a Super Bowl? There is a little bit of a mystique around Jimmy Garoppolo that he wins at a high... I mean, listen, he got the Niners to a Super Bowl and got them really close... Got them really close again. Yeah, I, I know. I know. It doesn't really... Your eyeballs don't see it, but there is something about Jimmy G. He could have been an upgrade. Yeah, he could have been an upgrade. Carl was great last year. So yeah, I wonder if this was more of a personality conflict also between McDaniels and Carr. Yeah, Were they no, never definitely. clearly not on the same page? Yeah, Jimmy G is a McDaniels guy through the Of course. So they're all like disciples. So now we've got a team in Las Vegas that, let's be honest, in the AFC, everything was going to have to pretty much go right for them to make the playoffs anyway, right? Right. So now, you come in with this uncertainty at quarterback, where your backup is Brian Boyer, and the other quarterback is Aiden O'Connell from Purdue, who you draft here. Do you know what the problem is, though? David Stidham. you got stars all over that field. That's a little confusing. So, by the way, they, they did get <laughs> today. Their first pick was Tyree Wilson out of Texas Tech. Their yeah. second pick was Michael Mayer out of the Reim, who the Jets had ranked as the 15th player on the board. Yeah. So maybe Dave... The audio came out from the yeah. Jets war room. They thought Mayer was going like 10. Yeah, so maybe GM Dave Ziegler did a nice job. But they have Josh Jacobs is arguably maybe the best running back in the league at running back. Then you've got Devontae Adams, who I would say probably the best wide receiver. And then you got Starver Crosby's unbelievable, Daniel Jones, borderline all favor. Uh, you know, so you've got a lot of... Getting up the football on the offensive side. You know? I know. I mean, well, first of all, I'd hand it. Josh Jacobs is going to run all the time. They uh -oh. could do a long-term deal. You're right. No, I, I, I don't know about that. But Adam said no one really wasn't that consistent last year. He still had tons of yards. See, that's the other thing, too, though. You mentioned Josh Jacobs. He's on the franchise tag, but they have not gotten a long-term deal. Which is fun to run. Yeah, but does that mean he's not going to show up for training camp? I mean, when you don't get the deal worked out, everything that comes along with it, it's just another headache. Yeah, but running backs have no bargaining power right now, so who, who knows about that? Yeah, listen, the Giants are dealing with Saquon Barkley. It happens. 
you know, also we're not even mentioning that they gave away uh, Darren Waller, who was their best receiver yeah. two years ago, and that there's a lot of rumors that they're on different pages of Hunter Renfro and they're going to either cut or trade Renfro. There's a lot more disruption coming here, too. Yeah, I, so I think we're both on the same page here that, yes, give it a shot. Maybe Jimmy G will come back, take a, take a puncher's chance, but if you're three or four games in, then you don't win these early games, which are hard games. Yeah. Maybe start thinking about that tag. I'm sorry, I, tagging, I know it's not popular, but um, I, you know, obviously I love the process in Philly. Yeah. This is a team that is right for a long process. Yeah, but you mentioned that there might be a little too much star power yeah. to, to tank. Now, there were the rumors the Raiders did want to try to get up all the way to one to trade with the Bears last year. Couldn't do it, but that does give a little bit of insight that they thought, geez, I mean, we might grow up low, but we're definitely going to need a plan B. And instead, that never happened. Maybe got a little too rich, which I would understand. And they instead decided to go for the band-aid of Garoppolo and Hoyer. And, well, I guess Garoppolo's already done. You go for the band-aid of Hoyer and then Aiden O'Connell. Yeah. Oh, well, this liar. What if you can get a... Ooh, it might be tough. What if you can get a high tech oil pick for Devontae Adams in the trade deadline? I wonder if Devontae Adams is going to ask for a trade. No, yeah. I've called that. I think it's going to be the Monday night game against Green Bay. That's when you're going to get the Lisa Salters, you know... Uh, you know, report, and down to Lisa. Like, well, we've had some interesting tweets today from Devontae Adams. He scrubbed his social media, you know, and now is that for uh, <laughs> If you're the Raiders, what do you think you can get for? I think it's really, I mean, I don't really know yeah, the... First round pick for him. See, they already got, like, a low first round pick for him for a now whole season. Now he's getting... older, and it'd be halfway through the season. I don't think you can get him. And it's Yeah, I don't think you can get a first round pick. So, they're not gonna, they're not gonna do it unless it's a higher pick. Yeah, I would watch this team carefully the first. Do you have their schedule in front of you? Because, like, yeah, I noticed you said Green Bay. If it starts to go real bad, maybe just selling off assets. But they don't do as much in the NFL. But no, not like that. So they start at Denver, then at Buffalo. Home for Pittsburgh, yeah. at the Chargers. Home for Green Bay. That's the Monday night game that I was circling. That's week five. Then they play the Patriots. Wow, there, is, I'm like, there are no breaks on the schedule at all. Oh, they're getting the number one there. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Difficult. This is a difficult schedule. I mean, it's, I can go through the rest. It, it is difficult. At Chicago, at Detroit, the Giants, the Jets, back-to-back -back weeks at MetLife Stadium. Excuse me, those are home. Giants, Jets, at Miami, yeah. Kansas City before you're by. So, like, uh, get a break. Minnesota on the way out. Chargers again. Okay, that's all right. At Kansas City, yeah. at Indianapolis, and then you finish up the season against Denver. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you're trying to tank, then you will have a great chance. You have a great chance. And Jimmy's not healthy. So I think that informs the backup quarterback decision. I was jokingly said Carson Wentz would be perfect. Why not just stick with Ryan Moore? He's a freaking Wentz, and all of a sudden he's good. And he might back you into a couple wins. Like, yeah, then you win six games. What's the point? Is he really, though? 8 5 2 If you have Jimmy G and Carson Wentz, I mean, who's more down than that? The fact that you have to think about it, yeah, I mean, Carson Wentz has a much better arm. He's more mobile. And, <laughs> yeah, because everyone loves Garoppolo. And, and nobody, love yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. nobody likes him. Um, also, Wentz has an ill-timed interception in every important game. Well, I mean, Garoppolo kind of throws those too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think Garoppolo's a little more of a proven winner. Actually, Wentz won two. Well, yeah. Garoppolo technically won two with Brian Brady. Yeah, Garoppolo is a winner. There is something there, and that's what they were looking at, but I think they might have really screwed this whole thing up. 855-212-4CBS, 855-212-4227. If it wasn't the Raiders who are having the worst offseason, then who is it? Because I think they pretty much take the cake. The one team that jumps to mind. Who oh, well. else? Houston Texans took a gigantic risk going up from 12 to 3 for next year's pick. We could look back in five years and say, if that ends up being a top three pick, yeah.